So thank you so much for everybody joining us here. This is on art. And for this episode, we are talking to Donna Usher, who is in the DuPont One Gallery with her solo exhibition, Natura. Um, I am Chase Storty, the curator of contemporary art here at the Delaware Contemporary. So thank you so much for being here with us, Donna. Well, you're so welcome. And I want to thank uh, you, Chase, and the Delaware Contemporary and the staff for the opportunity to exhibit at your wonderful and very diverse museum. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. So, um, you know, I want to just talk a little bit about um, the body of work, but I would love to start with a little bit of background information um, to contextualize what's in the galleries currently. Sure. So for the last 20 some years, um, I've been working uh, with the experiences that I've had, um, such as going to Australia and studying with Pam Coopy, an Aborigine artist, especially dot painting, and also making spheres and orbs. And on top of that, um, actually simultaneously during that time, um, I was uh, scuba diving. I have over 130 dives and just amazed by all the flora and the fauna, the shapes, the colors, um, I had no idea that existed. And um, it really heightened my awareness of nature because I grew up in town and went to school in the city. I really didn't have a connection until I started to travel, but especially uh, the undersea um, flora and fauna was just so inspiring to me. And the dot paintings uh, that I saw, because I also have some background an experience in ceramics. So working with my hands with that kind of um, percussion activity was really helpful in, in the painting, kind of a non-traditional approach to painting instead of using brushes. So I took all those ideas and um, started studying also patterns in the wind and sand and water, plowing patterns and uh, murmurations that starlings make, you know, those wonderful shapes in the sky that they dive in and out of, very similar to schools of fish. So I started to see this synergy between nature and its creatures. And I kind of mixed it all up and created this kind of uh, some type of primordial soup in the paintings um, and composed it. And also I'm very interested when I do the compositions to, to create um, some movement for the viewer. Like I like to take them on, on a trip. And because mm -hmm. of the ceramics, I'm also really interested in texture mm -hmm. and the experimental quality mm -hmm. of um, working with acrylics. And I work on aqua board. I have for the last 20 or so years, which allows me to have those beautiful, beautiful uh, blooms in paintings, as well as very um, precise uh, painting. But I use a lot of... Um, tools that I create as opposed to brushes. Sometimes I use brushes, but uh, a lot of them I, I, I make because you know that's just what you do when you need something that doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Um, yeah, so the Natura series um, is really about um, focusing on circles and spheres and organic shapes um, from planets, from microscopic cells, and all those things I've, I've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and you can certainly see how line, color, shape, and texture are, are, are used in all those things. Um, even if you didn't know that some of the shapes were from sea fans or from some of the patterns that connect the, I call them like bouquets of colors and mm -hmm. circles are murmurations. I mean, they're not little birds, but mm -hmm. they're, they're the um, patterns of, the, of their flight. Right. Well, and I think, you know, and to go back to what you were talking about with movement, that's what, you know, you really feel it when looking at this series of work um, is just this continuous movement. But it's also um, when you're looking at the entire gallery in and of itself, but each piece individually has its own very distinctive texture and movement. And I think that you've done so well with that, just working within those different formats, you know, the kind of larger rectangular pieces that are in the show and also these very intimate small squares. Yeah, the smaller pieces uh, started out as studies 
because mm -hmm. Aquaboard has very unique qualities, unlike Canvas. Mm. And um, I use everything uh, from balloons to stylus um, to scrub brushes. Um, I also use my fingers a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nice thing about the Aquaboard is you can sand it so you can take the paint away. So it's an addition and a subtraction process. And my um, most favorite new tool is Mr. Clean uh, Magic uh, Sponges. You can pull the paint off the surface. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting for me. I, I was trained in, in realistic uh, still lifes. Mm -hmm. um, and that was and that was good training in oil paints, but I just found that the acrylics and uh, the abstraction was just more the process was more interesting to me. Mm. When you're working day after day, hour after hour, year after year, because I've been doing this for about fifty years, um, you really need to be excited about the everyday process. You just mm. can't be turning out a commodity. And although right. I, I'd like to sell them because I'd like them to find homes, I don't have mm -hmm. that in the back of my mind. Right. I'm really trying to make something um, beautiful in the, in the truth sense of the word, but mm -hmm. very much a personal vision mm -hmm. um, of the combination of all these things that I really, really love. Well, I think too, I mean, these tools, what's so amazing in hearing you talk about even using balloons is just how clean the circles and the orbs that you create, they come out so crisp and clean, but they also just have such a wonderful play on texture on the actual board itself. Well, you know, my heroes are um, Frankenthaler mm -hmm. and uh, Morris Lewis, you know, back in the seventies when we started to do those things. And I, and I was working on canvas and I love, I love the staining, but you know, then I went on to do um, actually almost hyper-realistic paintings of people mm. in and out of water, did a lot of underwater uh, photography. Mm. So I've always been interested in the fluid and water, but I've gone back and forth. And even with the ceramics, I did these huge spheres out of clay um, that when you roll them, they make sounds. So whether it's orbs or ellipses, mm -hmm. um, that th there is a consistency with, with the ideas and, and the shapes. But mm -hmm. with the aqua board, um, I work on a table and you have to level the table. Mm -hmm. uh, and once it's leveled, then you can create like a circle of water. Mm -hmm. And then you drop your paint, a certain consistency. You know, all this has a technique that for right. someone who is really interested, um, I would go into, but if you're not doing it, it doesn't really make too much sense. But if it's too thick, it doesn't work. If it's too thin, it doesn't work. But the perfect consistency, when you drop it, it kind of goes. Mm. And it will stay within that border of water. And wow. it takes about 12 to 14 hours for that to really dry. Mm. And although I babysit it for about four hours and I move it around with a heat gun. Mm -hmm. When I come in the next morning, it's completely different. Most wow. of the time, wonderful, but sometimes not so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, again, I could sand some of that off or I could blot it off or I could do another thin layer. I try to work in layers. Yeah. Because then um, you can create more depth. And I do some drawings underneath. Mm -hmm. So even though, you know, I certainly spend um, money on good photography and I have a wonderful... Uh, tech that helps me with my um, website to put mm -hmm. all the paintings on. It certainly isn't a great representation because you can't see through the paint in the photographs. Right, right. Like, so when people talk about buying art off the internet, I find I find that difficult to mm -hmm. actually imagine that they can see it well mm -hmm. because I know in my paintings and many many others, there's so many layers, and and they would miss that. Definitely, yeah. And, the newest thing I've been trying, which isn't new. Um, I mean, I think lots of acrylic artists do this, but um, I just started, if you take wax paper hmm. and um, you take um, matte media or gloss media and you just drip it on in certain organic shapes, let that dry, you can pull that off and then attach it to your painting like applique. Oh. No, I could, I could color it, I can put paint in it. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'll use dry raw pigment, 
which mm -hmm. I will like grate like cheese. Mm -hmm. And then that does sink into the liquid medium enough that it's permanent, but it's very rough. Wow. So if you're a very special person and you're with me, I usually let people feel the paintings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feeling the paintings. It's not that anything is going to happen to them because you could probably surf on aquaboard and it would be okay. <laughs> It's just the oil on, on, right. on your fingers. So that makes um, sense. I, I, yeah, I keep trying to put to push the medium um, more and mm -hmm. more and more with old techniques and new techniques and one on top of the other. Then that kind of, you know, what what keeps me going. Yeah, I mean that's so fascinating, Donna. I really love the. There's just so much experimentation going on there. I wondered. Two, because something that strikes me so much about your work is the color and the vibrancy of your color palette. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? Is there a lot of experimentation in there? You know, I, I do very small little studies on like watercolor paper with the paints. I usually, I usually use golden liquid text is fine, but, mm -hmm. but I do have a palette of about five or six colors okay. that I find very uh, compatible. Mm. Uh, and I decrease and increase the intensity by the amount of paint I add <clears throat> to the water. Now, I like to add a little matte media because I don't like the shininess that sometimes mm. acrylics, but acrylics have really evolved over the years. I mean, a lot of times you can't even tell them, you know, from, from oils. But again, mm -hmm. if you're going to use layers, you want to keep it matte because it absorbs um, uh, uh, so much better. Mm -hmm. Color is a very, very difficult thing. And I've studied some of the best colorist paintings. You know, they always say, you know, use the complementaries um, to reinforce one color next to the other, the opposites on the color wheels for those, you know, people who don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. but you have to be careful because it can get garish. And if you really try to match paint colors to nature, you'll see that the paint color, I'm sorry, the, the colors in nature are very subdued. Even mm. though a, a yellow flower looks bright yellow, next to yellow paint, it's really not bright yellow. Right. No, it's, it, it's very diluted. It's just that usually it's against um, green or blue sky. In fact, I was just watching on Netflix something called Moving Art. Mm -hmm. And it's phenomenal for anyone oh. who wants wants to see it, it there's no um, narration and mm. I, and again I've seen a lot of beautiful photographs of art but this is um, nature in motion and it focused on oceans but I just saw the one on flowers and I just couldn't wow. believe how flowers fold and then unfold mm -hmm. and all the little details but I was really really looking at the color and I was thinking you know that's really a diffused yellow so I don't want the paintings to be garish, but I do want them to have beautiful color. But it's it, you know, it's a beautiful struggle. <laughs> it's a, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm constantly evaluating, reevaluating. Like I've been to the show down at um, the Delaware Contemporary probably about four times because mm -hmm. seeing your work um, in a gallery with with great lights. And by the way, all of you who lit. <laughs> The uh, gallery did such a beautiful job. I keep telling people it looks like a little jewel box. You know, you just, I made, know. You just made them glow. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased. Oh. I'm so pleased. Thank oh, you so God. much. And you know, the gallery is in <laughs> beautiful shape. You know, it's that nice, that nice uh, kind of square shape. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I, st I studied the paintings and I'm thinking, okay, what is my favorite part? Why is it my favorite part? Mm -hmm. And what makes it my favorite? You know, I, I'm trying to um, um, kind of dissect them so I can do it again. Right. Because the good thing is, I don't know if other artists feel this way, but I'm, ha I'm happy about this, but I'm always surprised. <laughs> when I see my work after I haven't seen it for a while, I think it looks better than I remember. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I don't remember all the pain and the anxiety and the self-doubt <laughs> that I go through. But most artists of any type, whether they're dancers, you know, write, writers, writers tell me, you know, they, they write like a paragraph like 15 times you know, before. <laughs> so that makes me feel better. Because, you know, I'm like making a dot and going, mm, I don't know about oh, oh. <laughs> over there. Maybe <laughs> Oh, now get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. And I'm like, really? 
just take a break, <laughs> walk away. Um, but you, you do have to be careful of that. I mean, you need solitude, mm-hmm. but you can't turn in on yourself. Right. And honestly, and you know, I, I love to talk to beginning artists or, or, or I mean, I, a longtime teacher, but even you know, y- younger artists, but, but artists that have been making art for a long time, you have to just say to yourself, look, I've got three degrees in art. You know, I've been criticizing and teaching other people, you know, how to make better art or, or uh, more authentic art for 50 years. I should be able to place that dot in the right place <laughs> at this point <laughs> in my artistic life. I mean, I mean, you really have to, you know, pat yourself in the back and say, come on, now you can do this. Mm -hmm. You're just having that human anxiety that we all have about everything. Everything. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Well, and I think that kind of reflection that you're doing, you know, going through and dissecting what is working, what is not, that is such a great constructive way to reflect on your work and to figure out, you know, where to place that dot accurately <laughs> next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, most of us as creative people, and again, I, I'm very interested in related arts. Um, so I know a lot about dancers and choreography and the commonality is this um, f- f- feeling like it's not good enough or the, the next painting, like my next show is really gonna be good. And I'm saying, mm-hmm. really? <laughs> you, you just spent, you know, Nine years doing this show, <laughs> trying try to, try to enjoy um, the end product. But I think that helps us as artists to talk to each other and that we know that we all go through the same process. Right. Um, I mean, I, I see it in, in everyone and you don't have to be an artist. I mean, you know, you could be a business person or a math teacher, but you know, are, are, you, are you teaching it the right way? But the truth is you have to learn to teach in multiple ways. And mm-hmm. the same thing with making any kind of art. I mean, you make yeah. the best decision you can with all the knowledge you have, and then mm-hmm. you go with it and you have to move on. Otherwise you paralyze yourself. Right. Well, I think too, I mean, that's, um, that's a, a, you know, this show that's up Natura, it just has such a meditative quality about it. And I think that that's a really good way to, wrap up this interview and saying, you know, I mean, come to see the show. I think that it's really, it provides that space and um, it really is truly amazing. So thank you so much, Donna. You're so welcome. And thank you so much. It's been great.